In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sasagot po kayo ng malakasa. Ulitin natin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family on this first Sunday of Advent, with confidence let us ask the Lord's forgiveness, for He is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you invite us to be vigilant, but we often behave as if you will never come. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you knock at the doors of our hearts, asking to be admitted, but we often turn a deaf ear. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to be attentive to the needs of our neighbors, but many times we pretend not to see. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Advent is like a pilgrimage to the house of the Lord. Today, the prophet Isaiah invites us to undertake such a pilgrimage that we may learn from the Lord His way of peace and fruitful collaboration, two gifts that we need so badly nowadays. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. 
Jerusalem built as a city with a compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my brothers and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Advent is an invitation to live behind the darkness of sin. Encouraged by the words of the Apostle Paul, we should move confidently into the brightness of God's grace and service. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Show us, Lord, your love, and grant us your salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake. 
for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Friends, sisters, and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Kagaya ng pagbati ko sa inyo, sabi sa ating Ibanghelyo, Stay awake! Maaari ba pakibati nyo rin? Pakipansin naman yung mga katabi nyo sa kaliwa at kanan. Pakisabi rin, Good morning! Maaga kasi alas 6. Iba sa atin, kahit nga ako pupungas-pungas. Uh, hindi ko alam. Marami tayong hindi alam. Pero welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Yung iba sa inyo, galing pa sa malayo. Hindi natin alam kung tayo ay sasapit dito sa Manawag ng walang kaabi-abiriya ang sasakyan. Di po ba? Pero welcome. You are already here. So, andito tayo. Hindi natin sigurado nung tayo umalis ng bahay kung tayo ay makakarating na matiwasay o hindi. But we are thankful that you are here. Sabi sa ating Ibanghelyo, the day and the hour about which we do not know comes to us in so many ways. Kailan ba? Hindi ko alam. Anong araw? Hindi ko alam. Ano mangyayari? Hindi ko alam. Marami tayo hindi alam. Pero tayo ay nabubuhay pa rin. Di ba? There are many things in our life that we do not know that are uncertain. But even that uncertainty, that change, is not permanent. Ano ba yung permanent sa ating buhay? Tayo, nabubuhay ngayon, masaya tayo. Kapag first Sunday kasi of Advent, parang nakakatakot, di ba? Parang, parang may sinasabi ang Panginoon sa atin. Yung ba ay the end of the world na babasahin natin uli ang gospel. Wala naman siya sinasabing magugunaw na ang mundo. Pero kapag ka imagine natin na magugunaw o matatapos na ang mundo, di ba para tayong na-anxious, para tayong natatakot na mang itsura ng pagka natapos na ang buhay dito sa mundong ito. Wala, hindi natin maiimagine, hindi natin alam. Ang kinabukasan, ang mangyayari bukas, alam niyo ba? Hindi rin. Pero kailangan ba natin matakot? Tinatakot ba tayo ng Panginoon? Hindi. Sinasabi lang niya, be away, kailangan gising, kailangan handa. Parang Boy Scout, parang Girl Scout, laging handa. Always in the ready. Papa, ano ba maghanda? Ako gano'n ang ginagawa natin ngayon, di ba? Yung iba nga eh, Paskong-Pasko na kung nakainaan dito kahapon, binuksan yata nila yung mga ilaw dyan sa Manawag Park. Parang Pasko na. And there are still four weeks. Kayo pupunta sa mall, parang Pasko na. Gusto natin i-advance, di ba? Bakit? Hindi tayo sigurado kung tayo sasapitin pa nga ng Pasko. Pero chances are tayo ay sasapiti ng Pasko. Sapagkat tayo ay nabubuhay in the midst of uncertainty and not knowing. Maaring negatibo yan, no? Pero hindi ba ang buhay natin ay maraming surprises because our God is a God of surprises? Malay niyo bukas. Kung kayo'y tumaya sa lottery o sa loto, manalo kayo. Alam nyo ba yun? Hindi. Malay nyo. Kung kayo ay merong karamdaman ngayon, sabihin na nating stage 4. Bukas makalawa, wala ka nang nararamdaman. O marami rin dito, pumupunta sa manawag sapagkat humihingi ng panalangin at dasal para makapasa. Makakapasa ba tayo? O hindi? Hindi natin alam. 
mga asawa ninyo, mga spouses ninyo, faithful ba sa inyo? Oh, 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 oh kayong ano, relax lang kayo ha. Hindi ko kayo tinatakot. I don't want you to, to, to suspect your partners. No. Ang mahalaga siguro tanungin natin ang sarili natin, am I faithful? Yun. Di ba? In today's gospel, walang mentions ang Panginoon na matatapos na ang mundo. Actually, tinuturoan niya tayo para paano maging, maging handa. Sapagkat ang impermanence, walang permanente sa mundong ito. Uncertainty, walang tiyak, walang katiyakan, is what the gospel is all about. Kapagka tayo ay nabubuhay dyan sa ganyang klaseng atmosphere, napapansin nyo ba? Diba hindi naman? Nabubuhay at nabubuhay pa rin tayo. Kagaya nga nung sinabi rin sa gospel, during the time of Noah, yung delubyo nangyari at anong ginagawa ng mga tao? Kumakain, umiinom, kinakasal, giving in marriage, etc., etc., but they were not ready for the flood. E tayo, di ba? Sa disaster scale, uh, mataas tayo. Tayo yung naghahanda. Yung mga LGU natin, naghahanda tayo. Pero kahit na ano pang antas o taas ang ating paghahanda, meron pa mga damages. Meron pa mga nabibiktima ng sakuna. But we are ready. In other words, Yung pagiging uncertain ng ating future has become part of our life already. Kaya dapat hindi tayo matakot. Yung tinatawag natin apocalypse, mahirap talaga yun. Mahirap i-imagine. Pwede tayong matakot, pwede tayong di nga natin alam kung anong ating ipapanalangin, di ba? Kumisan, all that we have to do is to accept it. Resignation. We often don't know what to say. We sometimes don't know what to pray for. Marami ang mga katanungan, pero kakaunti ang mga sagot. Kahit na merong mga paliwanag, hindi pa rin tayo panatag. That day and hour is not so much about what is happening here, dito sa ating isipan. But what is happening in our hearts dito sa ating puso? Bakit? Sapagkat ang pusong yan, ang lugar kung saan makikita at nagtatagpo ang misteryo ng Diyos at ang ating buhay. Hindi po ba? Kailangan ba natin matakot? Hindi. Ano ba ang laman ng ating puso kapag ka first Sunday of Advent at tayo tinasa, sinasabi ang stay awake, maging gising. Hindi kailangang matakot sa tayo nabubuhay na sa atmosphere of impermanence and uncertainty. Walang katapusang pagbabago. Ay, tingin tayo sa ating puso. Tingnan natin ang tibok ng ating puso. Naririyan ang Panginoon o wala? Nako, eh, pagka wala ang Panginoon diyan. Kabahan na tayo. Pero kung naandiyan ang Panginoon, puso ko, buhay ng Diyos, relax lang tayo, chill lang tayo. Nasa akin ang Panginoon. Nasa inyong mga puso. Ang Panginoon. Kaya tumitibok nga ang ating puso eh. Alam ba natin kung kailan hihintong tumibok yan? Hindi. Naandiyan ang Panginoon. The question is not about the end of the world, but about how we live with uncertainty. Not knowing. Wala tayong kapangyarihan. Wala tayong control. But are we faithful? Tayo ba ay patuloy na nananalig at naniniwala na ang Panginoon ay nasa ating puso? Ano bang itsura niyang faithfulness na yan? Ano bang itsura ng pananalig na yan? Nasaan ang ating sentro? Nasaan ang ating core? C-O-R-E. Ang ibig sabihin ng salitang yan, core, puso. Kasi kadalasan kapag ka magulo ang ating paligid, di ba nawawala tayo sa direksyon, nalilito tayo, we are confused, di natin alam ang gagawin. 
But if God is there at the center of our lives, then we are okay. Sabi ng isang makata si John Keats, kailangan daw kapag ka ang buhay natin ay medyo magulo, may gera dito, may famine doon, mahirap ang buhay, merong may sakit, merong nawawala. Nawawala hindi lamang physically pero parang walang direksyon ang buhay. Kailangan daw marunong tayo mag-develop ng negative capability. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, the ability to sustain ourselves in uncertainty. E sanay na tayo dyan. Kumisan tinatanggap na lamang natin ang dumarating sa ating buhay. Hindi tayo nagpapanik. Chill lang tayo. Sapagkat hindi natin makukontrol lahat. Bakit tayo makarelax? Sapagkat alam natin, God knows best. Hindi tayo papabayaan ng Diyos. Yun yun eh. God is also, sa bukabularo ng Diyos, wala yung salitang imposible. Kahit uncertain, kahit hindi natin tiyak ang kinabukasan. God is the God of the possible. That is why we have to keep awake and to be ready. For what? Sa ano ba pinaghahandaan natin? Sana kaya ko sabihin ko ano. Hindi lamang Pasko yan. O Pasko, sige Pasko. Yung ba talaga pinaghahandaan natin? Kailan mangyayari? Tinatawag na pagdating muli ng Panginoon. Alam ko ba? Meron bang may alam? Wala. Ang masasabi ko lamang is to keep awake, kagaya rin ang sinabi ng Panginoon, and to be ready for whatever comes to us. And what does not come to you, kasama din yun. Eh ano ba yung darating sa atin? It is the unfolding of our lives. Buhay natin ang nagihintay din sa atin. These days, and ours are unpredictable, unknown, malaking question mark, impermanent. Pero nababawasan ba yung ating buhay? Hindi. Nabubuhay pa rin tayo, kumakain, umiinom, nagsasalita, namamasya, lahat, everything that we do. It does not diminish life. Kailangan na mag-intensify pa yung ating buhay. It heightens its values. It deepens its meaning. Kailangan mas, ma, mas mahalaga. Kailangan mas meaningful ang ating buhay sapagkat hindi tayo sigurado kung anong naghihintay sa atin. And that is why we have to live each day of our lives as if it is our last. Yun. It opens up the possibility of the impossible. Diba? Father, pabless naman na itong aking envelope at mga lapis at uniform. Pagkat hindi tayo sigurado kung tayo papasa sa board o hindi. Pero alam natin, pwede tayong pumasa. Di masaya tayo. Di wow. Eh kung hindi, o di try again. Kapag sinabi natin, we have to live our lives like it is the last day of our life, everything matters. Ayaw nating mamiss ang bawat sandali. So, makinig tayo sa unang linggo ng Advent. Stay awake. Be ready. Pero kung naandyan sa ating puso ang Panginoon, wala tayong dapat alalahanin. Kung bakit tumitibok ang ating puso, nariyan ang Panginoon. Nasa Kanyang kamay ang ating mga buhay. We now stand to profess our faith. Laksan po natin at sabay-sabay tayo ha. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, earth. Of all, all things, things visible and invisible, and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and, and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin this new liturgical year, dear friends, let us entrust all our intentions and needs to our loving God, for He alone knows what is beneficial for us. So with confidence and with deep faith, we are going to say, Lord, graciously hear us. Ilakas po natin. Lord, graciously hear us. For the church, the community of all believers, may she rediscover the richness of the Eucharist and find in it greater unity and strength. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father, our bishop, priest, and all religious, may they be evermore an inspiration to all on how to be always ready to welcome Jesus in our hearts. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all parents and educators, may they teach their children and students how to see Jesus present in their neighbor and welcome him in them. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us and the rest of our community in this Advent, May we attain a clear improvement in our spiritual lives. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, we thank you. For the gift of this new liturgical year, may we be able to avail of every opportunity to draw ever closer to you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sagot po kayo ng malakas ha. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design You formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith The 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Fidelis, his auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Dominic and Francis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now offer to one another Christ's sign of peace. Sa inyo pong lahat, peace be with you. And sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please stand. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, 
in which we have participated. Profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. So once again, my dear brothers and sisters, wag tayong mag-alala, wag tayong matakot. Even if we do not know many things in this world, even when we do not know when we will encounter Jesus for the last time, what is more important is for us to live our lives fully and to glorify the Lord with those lives that we have. So maraming salamat po sa inyong pag, uh, pakikisa sa amin sa misang ito. Sana po ay patuloy nyo kami ipagdasal at ipanalangin sa aming mga responsibilidad dito sa Minor Basilica. At makakaasa din po kayo sa aming mga panalangin sa tuwing kami ay nagsasama-sama upang mag-alay ng mga prayers for your intentions and for the intentions of the entire church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Kagaya ng pagbati ko sa inyo ng the Lord be with you, maaari siguro natin babaunan ang ating mga katabi ng ganyang greeting din. Pakibati rin ang inyong mga katabi ng the Lord be with you bago tayo magkahiwahiwalay. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have offered the Holy Eucharist. We go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. We shall now have the prayer of the blessing of the sick and afterwards ay yung mga rosario at mga religious articles. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health in accordance with your holy will. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed, and for those who will use them, made holy, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.